I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will tell of your name to my king. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery, the solemnities of your son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escort had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What, therefore, you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth. And he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from any one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since, therefore, we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image, fashioned from gold, silver, or stone, by human art or imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has provided confirmation from all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, we should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysus, a member of the court of Arapathus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all you his host. 
like the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys, heaven and earth are full of you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are full of you, Lord. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia, alleluia. I will ask the Father and will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that you will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. God is good. And all the time, when we talk of Athens, one common association comes to mind. That is philosophy. The people of Athens are widely known to be great philosophers. People who use reason, who loves to think. But uncommonly, if I may say, there is something beautiful about the people of Athens that we read about in the first reading of today. Although philosophers, people who love to reason, we are told how they appreciated something beyond themselves, something beyond the material. That is... To them, it was an unknown God. But what is beautiful is that they realized that the world or the truth was not only about them or the things they could see and touch. And that is what the psalmist we talks about today, that heaven and earth are full of your glory. That is, we have things that are related to the heavens, that we cannot see, but still exist. And we have things that relate to the earth that we can see and touch. And so for them to have appreciated this basic reality was in itself very encouraging. But still, the truth that they possessed was very limited. That is why when St. Paul came in contact with them and realized that they had that sense of religiosity, but very limited, sought to help them improve on the truth that was available to them. And so he proclaimed to them the known God, the God who was killed and still resurrected. Like I said, truth is limited. It is like an organism that grows. It doesn't change, but still it grows. 
And that is why in the gospel reading of today, Jesus Christ talks about the fact that he has so many things to talk about to his disciples. But still, if he does, they cannot comprehend them all. But when the Spirit comes, the Spirit will gradually lead them to all truth. Because truth grows. And as limited as we are, we cannot on the spot comprehend all truth, whether religious or material. That is why if you look at our human salvation, God, before he revealed Jesus Christ to us, began in a gradual way from the Garden of Eden. It came with the fall of man, the Egyptians in exile and all that, till the incarnation happened. Truth grows and it happens. It gets revealed in time. But when St. Paul revealed that truth to them, we realized that some of the people on the spot couldn't, became very much uncomfortable with the truth. Some also asked for more time so as to comprehend the truth. And some, like Dionysius and Dam Damaris, and we are told some of them also, accepted the truth on the spot and followed the truth. Truth comes with time. But for us as humans to accept that, it needs great humility and our availability to the Holy Spirit. So we are asking ourselves, whenever we come in contact with the truth, how do we relate with the truth? Do we relate as superhumans who need no growth when it comes to truth or not? The fact in the readings of today is that we learn to unlearn, and there come moments also that we unlearn so as to learn. We pray in this Holy Mass that God will bless us and give us with a humble heart to always avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit to lead us to all truth, no matter the forms and through the forms it comes to us. God bless us. Because God is our stronghold in times of need, we petition him with our prayers. For the church, may God give us the grace to hear and live by the spirit of truth. And for all who hold civic or political office, may God lead them in acting with good wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For those struggling with financial burdens, May the Lord provide all that they need and help them trust in his providence. And for our faith community, may God endow us with a spirit of mercy toward others. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially those of our community and those we know. May the Lord shine his face upon them and grant them eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let us put our various intentions before God. Love and God, hear and grant these petitions we have placed before you with trust and heart through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the neck of human hands, that it may become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of divine and wreck of human hands, that it may become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear people of God, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord God Almighty. Let us pray. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worldly way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times to so acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, he never ceased to gather to offer himself for us, but he, he defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers for the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending now your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sarko ascended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. 
until he come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and was so many in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will. Your whole heaven reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and I have appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia.
let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless and keep you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Prayer of Pope Leo the Thirteenth to Saint Joseph. To you, O Blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our affliction, and having implored with the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hands filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection through that sacred bond of charity, which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and by that heavenly love with which you embrace the child Jesus. We humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood and to aid us in our necessities with your power and strength. Defend, O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, O most loving Father, all light of error and corruption, Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a virtuous life die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, 